question that was presented to me is, why do Christians meet on Sunday? And that brings up several issues that we probably should talk about. First of all, the simple answer to the question is, Christians under the New Covenant meet on Sunday as a celebration that Jesus was physically raised from the dead. So every time we go to church on Sunday, the Lord's Day, it says in Revelation, that we celebrate the fact that our Savior was demonstrated to be the Messiah when he was raised from the dead. The uh, Jewish people have had a lot of Messiahs since Jesus, 50 of them, as a matter of fact, there's a book I read. But the only one that's the true Messiah was physically raised from the dead, so we celebrate that on Sunday. You don't really have to have Easter. That's more of a tradition. We have Sunday. But let's go into this. What about keeping Sabbath? The word Sabbath means rest. Do Christians have to keep a Sabbath? Well, the answer to that is no. But we have to understand in Exodus, when Moses gave the Sabbath law, he gave it as part of the Mosaic legislation, which is a unit. Many people look at the Sabbath as separate three sections since the Reformation. They have the civil, the ceremonial, the moral, and they think we can separate that like you can cut a pie. But uh, actually, in the Old Testament, there is a curse. In Deuteronomy 27 and 28, that you just don't keep parts of it. You just don't keep the moral. You've got to keep all of it. So they got on Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal and they said, blessed is the one who keeps all of it, but cursed is the one who doesn't do all of it. So that's where Paul said in Galatians 3.13 that Christians are under a curse if we attempt to keep the law because here, you want to keep the Mosaic legislation? You got to do it all. Well, that'll drive you nuts because James said in Acts 15, none of us could do it. Why should we make the Gentiles? So, God instituted the Sabbath so that on the sixth day, they could work. They could work one for, uh, through the sixth day. And then on the Sabbath day, they were to contemplate Yahweh, which is the true name of God, not Jehovah, but Yahweh. They could contemplate all that he had done for the nation. And he was. T- they were told, don't work, don't go out and work. But they never defined what work was in the Mosaic legislation. So the rabbis went crazy. What's work? So they began to say, oh, well, maybe if we go further than a stone's throw. And you could almost do a comedy on all the rules they had about the Sabbath, but what it just simply was was for Israel to contemplate what God had done. But when Jesus came, he fulfilled the Old Testament law, and he inaugurated the New Covenant. The New Covenant does not have a Sabbath. In the future, we have the millennium, which may be the Sabbath, but not like Moses and that Sabbath. And it says, this is the new covenant in my blood. And at that point, Moses and that legislation passed from it being applicable. And Hebrews said, that there's been a change in priesthood. Jesus is now our priest. There's a change in law and all of that mosaic legislation. It says this, he made that first covenant obsolete. Read Hebrews 8.13. So Paul says to us in Colossians that all of these ideas of the mosaic covenant are but shadow. They are not the real substance. And that substance belongs to Christ. So we go to church on Sunday to celebrate the resurrection. And there's only one really law, rule, that Christians are under in the new covenant. And guess what that is? It's something we really need to concentrate on, the law of love. So the question we ask ourselves is, as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection on Sunday, is what would love do? What would love do in light of what Jesus has done for us? And Paul says, don't let anybody judge you on food or drink. And don't we get people that judge us on that? Those are just 
shadow and dust, we are under the law of Christ, which is the law of love, and we are celebrating on Sunday that our Savior was physically raised from the dead.